Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Tuesday, March the 30th. It's 9.49 a.m. I'd like to bring to you the word from Dawn's letter this morning. Well, there's just two on here. With the first one, uh, let's see, it's, is it, this came in this morning, March 30th at 7.29 a.m. The very first one is Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marcia Burns. Do what you can to establish and maintain spiritual and emotional balance. It is imperative that you stay strong and steady, especially when faced with uncertainty and upheaval. I will give you wisdom in accommodating change. You will once again find a sense of normal, but not without effort and putting your trust in me. The scripture put with that is from Psalm 9, verse 10. And those who know your name, capital Y there, those who know your name and put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. So do what you can to establish and maintain spiritual and emotional balance. That's understandable. It is imperative that you stay strong and steady, especially when faced with uncertainty and upheaval. I'm kind of thinking this is worded to the second rounders. He says, I will give you wisdom in accommodating change. You will once again find a sense of normal, but not without effort and putting your trust in me. If you find yourself here after the first fruits are gone and the babies are taken and anyone else considered an innocent, You must put your trust in Jesus, in God Almighty, in Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. If you aren't yet filled with the Holy Spirit, you better cry out for him now. Because I don't know that you can be after. I don't know that you can. I don't know that you can't. I just, for some reason... I know that when the bride is taken, the restrainer is taken out of the way. Now, if the restrainer is the Holy Spirit, it says he is taken out of the way, not removed completely. So, hopefully anybody that wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit and be able to pray in tongues, that will help them through the tribulation. So I am thinking that we still can help you. Those who come back as the Harvest Army can still help those left behind get filled and get the ability to pray in tongues because it's a, you just going to have to pray for things you don't know. You don't know what's around the corner, but you know it ain't good. Kind of like, I hope that makes sense. Because the you know, tribulation is going to be pretty rough. It will be. And you have got to have God and you have got to trust. You have to put your trust in Jesus for all things. The trust in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So you do not get tempted to take the you know what. The V. Okay, moving on. Get up, repent, and move on. That's the title of this one. 
and it's by someone I never heard of called Polox, P-O-L-L-O-X. And it was, it's dated Wednesday, March 24th. So they must have received it, the 24th. What did I say it was? The 30th? Yeah. Note, I stalled on this one, not because I don't want to be exposed as a sinner. Good job. Go get it. But have been under, I'm sorry, I'll start over. He, he's playing and it's so cute. Note, I stalled on this one, not because I don't want to be exposed as a sinner, but have been under nonstop satanic attacks and would prefer to stay under the rug. <coughs> Excuse me. I.E. a coward. Anyway, the Holy Spirit kept at me. I had a dream and thought it had to do with me, but was told no and finally was given the scriptural reference. He didn't say what the dream was. All right, here's his message. So, you have fallen once again into sin. Get up. The time is short. Do not let Satan gain any ground. Put on the whole armor of God. And he doesn't list it here, I'm surprised. But you can read all about that in Ephesians chapter 6 if you don't already know about it. Put on the whole armor of God. Claim the blood of Jesus. Ask for the Holy Spirit fire to cover you every time you fall. Defeat is not for my own children, but for the godless. Now listen to this. The godless, the lukewarm. That means they accepted Jesus at some point, but now they're lukewarm. Scoffers, blasphemers, adulterers. Fornicators, murderers, and that's people who hate anyone in their heart. You hate somebody, you're considered a murderer. Jesus said that out of his mouth. If you lust after women or men, you're an adulterer at heart. Perverts, liars, a lot of people are liars. And they think they're good people. Thieves. Those. Listen to this. Those not made in my image and likeness. Those that hate their creator, God Almighty. Now that part, see there's a list in the Bible that says all up to the part, those not made in my image. Who can you think of that's no longer made in his image and likeness? Because their DNA has been changed. And those that hate their creator. The storm is about to explode over your heads, my children. Stay under my wings. What you doing? You be a good boy over there now. Don't be doing nothing you ain't supposed to do. doing something weird over in the corner. I don't know what it is. Maybe he's got a toy back there. He, I don't know. Let's not get... I don't like getting interrupted. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> but I can't help it.
He's like a baby. I have to <laughs> watch him like a baby. Okay. Um, okay, then it goes on. The storm is about to explode over your heads, my children. Stay under my wings. Psalm 91. Everybody should be reading or reciting Psalm 91 every night. Do not fear. Pray without ceasing for the chaotic turbulence of today will seem like a calm body of water. Excuse me, like a calm body of water tomorrow. Remember, you are only given today. Be still and know that I am God. I will be your shelter, your shield and buckler, your all. Selah. Not many words come with the ending of Selah. You see that a lot in Psalms. If those of you are new, new Christian, you're not used to reading Psalms yet, you'll see that word after some of the Psalms. I believe it means, uh, oh here, I'll look it up. It's an exclamation. Sila. Sila. In the Bible, occurring frequently at the end of a verse in Psalms and Habakkuk, probably as a musical direction. Hmm. Six best definitions of Sila. All right, over here it says, is a word used 74 times in the Hebrew Bible, 71 times in the Psalms, and three times in the book of Habakkuk. The meaning of the word is not known, though various interpretations are given below. It is probably either a liturgical musical mark or an instruction on the reading of the text with the meaning of Stop and listen. I've heard it pause. Like, take a pause. Think about this. Another proposal is that Selah can be used to indicate that there is to be a musical interlude at that point in the psalm. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's in the middle, not at the end. It'll be a paragraph or two, and then the word over here, Selah. And then a paragraph or two, and then the word, Selah. So, if it means a, an interlude, it's take a pause right here. It can also be interpreted as a form of underlining in preparation for the next paragraph. A form of underlining. Yes, yeah, so it's an exclamation. That's, this is important. Pay attention to this. Okay, I hope that helped. Okay, where was I? Um, let me check my position. Okay. Um. Scriptural reference, out of the depths, Psalm 130. Out of the depths I have cried thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thy ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If thou, O Lord, wilt mark iniquities, Lord, who shall stand it? For with thee... There is merciful forgiveness, 
and by the reason of thy law I have waited for thee, O Lord. My soul hath relied on his word. My soul hath hoped in the Lord. From the morning watch, even until night, let Israel hope in the Lord. And you could just put your name there. Let me hope in the Lord. Because with the Lord there is mercy, and with him plentiful redemption. And he shall redeem me, or it, it says Israel here, from all his iniquities. And he shall redeem me from all my iniquities. You see, it wasn't just for Israel. But back then, this was Old Testament written. The Psalms were written by David and a few others. And they were talking about Israel because they were the chosen people, the ones that God centered on. Keeping them holy, keeping them uh, doing right. And he punished them when they did wrong. And then he redeemed them after 70 years or whatever. Okay? I hope that made sense. That's the end of this particular letter. I plead the blood of Jesus over it and pray it goes up and stays up. And I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every single one of you and all of our devices and our internet connection. But with that I say, bye for now. I'll talk to you later.